So I'd like you to quiet your mind and make a little sketch. Of course, from the funding standpoint, I can't complain. But it's less and less interested in research. I want it to be free of all this. It's not so good. But I brought that to our contracting office. And he said, Russ, you know we're not doing research anymore. Think about what we're doing. He said, I'm not paid to think. I'm paid to find out what DIA wants you to do and then see that you do it. I was heartbroken. Hal and Ingo were more secretive than ever. And now Ingo was in charge of the Army psychics and had made the program so complicated that only he could teach it. And I got a note from my partner, Hal, questioning whether I was really making a contribution to the program. What the most interesting data at SRI pointed to was exactly why Russell wanted to leave. It was a secret so big felt that if the general public could truly get it, it might bring enemies together, and it might even change the world. Russell was kind of the idea man, was uh, always kind of pushing the bad scientists type of thing, uh, where he actually looked apart to some degree. <laughs> I decided to leave. This was in 1985. We had dozens of psychics and lots of laboratories and people out there as consultants and so on. And I ended up spending all my time not doing research, but handling personnel issues and funding issues, writing grants and proposals. And I'd get up in the morning and say, well, you know, actually, I could be getting back to research. Mr. Gorbachev, tear down this wall. I say no more secrets. SRI's intelligence work with psychics would go on for another decade, mostly unnoticed, until one of their greatest covert triumphs became their most infamous leak. Remember Jimmy Carter's telling of finding the downed Russian bomber in the Congo? In 1995, President Carter recounted that during a talk to Emory University. External agents at CIA back in 1975 were secretly doing it. According to original program manager Ken Kress. Well, it turns out a couple of people around OTS, a, a lady by the name of Francine and a man by the name of Ed, they decided they wanted to be subjects. Subjects. And they were CIA employees now, at least, were not SRI employees. Actually got them involved with a, uh, with a Libyan analyst. I got gibberish, as I remember, from Francine, but, you know, Ed was an engineer, so he comes up like Pat with very specific stuff. He says, what I see is a, a Soviet uh, uh, radar that is involved with an air defense system. You know, he goes on and on with all this stuff. And so I package all this up, send it to the Libyan analyst, and he said, you know, we have an agent that we have not vetted who says similar things. And I said, you know, that's news to me. See, when they were with us, it was not clear whether they had come to see if there's defects in our model or whether they had come to be trained or both. Yeah, well, there may have been a, a slight uh, subterfuge, shall we say. You know, I might have sent them out there as evaluators, and they may have been motivated as participants. <laughs> By 1981. So I would ask the intelligence community to watch what we do for the next few years. And the CIA publicly derided the Army Run program. And in the end, they were asked to take it on again. It's a pretty low priority for the intelligence community, and uh, it's better done on the outside. Instead, they commissioned a third party report to, quote, see if it had been valuable to operational intelligence. And that's our report for tonight. So, what do all these stories add up to? Well, the two experts commissioned by the CIA report disagree. First, there's psychologist Ray Hyman from the University of Oregon. My considered judgment, if, if someone pushed me hard right now, I have to say uh, the odds are 99 to 1 that there's nothing to be made yet. Such and promote viewing has been demonstrated over the 20 years of work that's been sponsored by the government. Ed Day was very upset at the way the AIR report was done. He was very upset that they did not look at the operational remote viewing and that they did not allow us to talk to the operational remote viewers. 
I think he was quite disappointed that they narrowed the focus so much so that really it might have been a predetermined conclusion that they wanted to kill the president. I think that anybody who says we haven't proven it yet hasn't really looked at the data. I think, frankly, people don't want to look at the data. They have their worldviews. They don't want those world topics, both serious and lighthearted. And as always, President Carter answered them all. The release of that information contributed to the end of the remote viewing program at SRI. After Russell and Howe, viewing has a higher efficacy than aspirin. What was the CIA trying so hard to hide that they wouldn't even allow their best data to be seen? And why did the CIA just like those regular Joe Army guys so much? Private. 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 So, a very illuminating trip. You never know who your friends are. It's a deal. And I said, I stand by what I wrote in the report. And he said, well, I'm going to see if I can get access to the operational work. He called me back and he said, you got access to it, and none of the boxes have been opened. And what it means to be a, you know, a, a proper human being, whatever that might mean, and what is the essence of who we are. And I think that if the world actually had an access to that answer, I think it would change everything. So I'm pretty good. I'm used to it in Las Vegas. Psychic abilities are real, and you have these abilities. And now we've got a free ESP tester on the internet. By the time we finished, we knew more about uh, our remote viewers and NASA knew about astronauts. There's nothing different about them at all. These are just normal people. Like musical ability, you've got virtuosos at one end of the scale, you've got tone deaf people at the other. Well, it's just in our culture, no one values, quote. I received a phone call. The five is super. The one that Russell Tard has worked his whole life to release is that anybody can be sort of training program. And we have a target now that requires a draw. This is just where Hal Putoff was standing at the time of Hella Hammond's very first remote viewing. The images show up in your awareness. You want to get on paper the shape and the form pertaining to Paul's location. Paul and Cynthia in a bright green dress. Located in some interesting place. of information, I became 100% certain that it had potentially real intelligence significance, and I became 100% certain that it never would. What? What I thought were the issues that would make this a useful tool were both ignored, denied, and in addition, later dropped. It's Using the tools that I thought we had identified and which are politically possible to use today. Well, you're here. You really arrived. You can loosen up a bit now. You would have a latent ability, maybe a lot of humans have, that you'd be able to tease out some people. And you'd end up with what ended up. Correct, man. Uh, from a scientific standpoint, we, we look perhaps the most dangerous secret of all. 